Apple iPhone 4S, T-Mobile, Samsung Galaxy S2. It's dogfight time, starting right now. Here it is, that video you've been waiting for. Well, I don't know if you've been waiting for it, but it is the Clash of the Titans, two high-end devices, iOS versus Android, and more. Special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with a bunch of these types of phones for use in our One Paw Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these, the iPhone 4S or the Galaxy S2, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web. So when you go in to get it, or you go in to get that for as an early Christmas gift for mom, they'll help you set up their, her email, her web everything so when she walks out that door she's good to go she's walking out working at Best Buy Mobile but let's take a look at these Apple iPhone 4s over here Samsung Galaxy S2 over here on T-Mobile two high-end devices on their respective platforms you've got the iOS device over here now this device looks a lot like the iPhone 4 the 4s you know indeed is pretty much an evolutionary upgrade from the uh, from the very popular iPhone 4 so the designs exactly the same for the most part but you're gonna see some improvements under the hood it has a dual core one, uh, Apple A5 processor clocked at 800 megahertz or somewhere around 800 megahertz and has a better 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording on the sucker as well but otherwise you know same uh, same screen size 3.5 inch retina display as you can see here same design but there are some minor changes you'll notice the sim card slot over here on the side because this is an international device now whether you get it on Sprint or Verizon it does have a sim card slot so you can take it overseas I just came back with uh, my 4S from London on Verizon so uh, that's one of my many devices that I have and it worked pretty well so international capabilities are a go on the iPhone 4S and then it has this revised antenna design so even on the AT&T one if you remember AT&T and Verizon had two different antenna structures it's all the same on the 4S you've got your little uh, antenna lines right here and here and supposedly it can switch back and forth intelligently between the two antennas to figure out which one is pulling in the uh, the best signal it's also running iOS 5 so you get those notifications that you know and you've seen and then uh, some other improvements under the hood newsstand the ability to uh, check your reminders or add reminders and of course my favorite, Siri, is pre-installed on this sucker as well. Then you have the Galaxy S2 over here. Now, this is T-Mobile's version. This is the most recent one to come to U.S. shores, and it's packing quite a bit under the hood as well. It's got a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S3 processor, 4.52-inch Super AMOLED display, Super AMOLED Plus display. So you can see the comparison here, just screen to screen. It's got an inch difference on the screen size. 8-megapixel camera on the back of this as well with 1080p HD video recording. It uh, is a GSM device, so obviously it does have some international capabilities as well. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, power button on the side, volume rocker over here, and it's running Android 2.3 with Samsung's TouchWiz version 4.0. One button down here, but you can see the design differences here are pretty stunning. You know, Samsung, and uh, you know, I was told actually this is a part of the Korean culture, which uh, you know I haven't verified, but they say it's part of the Korean culture to kind of have a plasticky device. It's something that supposedly feels a little better in the hand. It's more lightweight, and that's why Samsung devices are mostly plastic. You may love it, you may hate it, but the Apple iPhone 4S has the best design. Now the downside is, or it has the best design in my opinion. Now the downside to this is, if you drop it, glass in the front, glass in the back, it's probably going to shatter, but you've got this beautiful metal accents around the side, glass in the front and glass in the back, and uh, just a good looking device, even though it's the same device design as last year's. And I think that's what's bothering a lot of people. You know, you look at this, even if they've named it the iPhone 5, I think that that design, just having the physical same design, if you've worked with a device for a year, you, know, you get to update and it's exactly the same or nearly the same in terms of design. I just think it's one of those things where you know, psychologically you're like, why would I keep this device again for another year, another two years when it looks exactly the same? Also, a lot of people think 3.5 inches is a little bit too small. I always love the way the 4S fits in my hand in comparison to a bigger device. But if you're doing a lot of media, you're doing a lot of web browsing, you're watching a lot of videos, that 4.52 inch display may be for you. But let's take a look you know, more in depth with the operating systems. iOS 5 over here, and you can see in terms of overall look and feel, not a lot's changed. You can see it's pretty easy to swipe back and forth. And one thing I've always really enjoyed about iOS in comparison to Android, I've never found an Android device that is as fluid as iOS 5, or iOS period, but especially iOS 5. You can see very fluid here, no lag whatsoever. It's a constant, very consistent experience. Whereas I feel with this, as much as I love, I'll pull that back out, as much as I love um, TouchWiz 4.0, it's one of my favorite skins on Android. I feel like it's a little stuttery, a little jittery at times, and I see that across all the platforms since, you know, TouchWiz and various iterations of Android as well. But you've got that, you know, your typical icons here, your typical apps, no widgets available on the various home screens, but then as you add applications down through here, it'll add to another home screen, another home screen, and another home screen. Now you can move these around pretty easily between the screen, then of course if I wanted to move this over here, 
I could uh, tongue tie there. If I wanted to move these over here, I could, and then I can always group them together. So if I wanted to put messages and calendar together, you can see how it creates a little folder called productivity, and I could do that if I so desire. Those are all updates that came uh, quite, uh, quite a little bit of time ago. Yeah, I think that was iOS 4, if I recall. Yeah, iOS 4. And then you get newsstand, which is a nice little feature here where it's available now that this is out of beta mode. I can go in here, I can go to the store, and I can download Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and have it update continuously in my little virtual newsstand. So if I travel a lot, I want access to that. I've got easy access through that. And the reminders is something new as well. And I've got the ability to come in here and click on the reminders. You know, I can say, uh, visit phone dog and I can quickly and easily uh, add a reminder. Or I can use Siri, which is a voice activation service that comes on this, and I have to give them credit. Yeah, it's not revolutionary. Yeah, it's not really anything new, but they've really done a good job of refining Siri, and out of all the voice activated stuff I've used, I think it's the best in terms of uh, being able to understand what I'm saying. So I can say, set reminder to watch a video. When would you like me to remind you? Eight o'clock. Let's see if it does it. It's gonna bring it up right now. I can add this to your reminders. Excellent. Shall I, can... I go ahead? Yes. So it brings that right up on my reminders, and obviously it's running a little bit slow right now. Sprint's having some 3G network issues in my area, in a bunch of the metro areas. Uh, it's gotten a little better, I feel, with the iPhone 4S, oddly enough, uh, but I still see some slowdown. So you're seeing Siri really work uh, hard to uh, pick up these various things. So Siri is obviously fun to play with, but you can see I can add that myself. And in the event, you know, I never recommend text messaging while driving. I think it's terrible and dangerous. But if you had to send an emergency text message to somebody, you could say, text message Kate, I'm going to be late. And then they would pop up and say that kind of rhymed too, but you can pop it up and it will uh, it will offer it up and it will allow you to send it without ever having to look at the display of the device. So very cool features. And again, you know, I can bring up Siri pretty quickly and easy by either holding here and I can see information. And it says I can call Jason. I can play. You know, I can send messages. I can do calendar appointments. I can do reminders. I can do map stuff. So a lot of different options with this, and not just options within the device itself locally, but assuming you have a, a decent data connection, you can search the web and find restaurants and more. So if I wanted a particular restaurant, so it's just nice to have, and they really refined it and made it very Apple-esque, and they've done a good job there. But again, you know, typical, uh, typical look to the home screens here, and then you have the notifications bar up here with your weather, your uh, stocks, and then I have reminders, and you can customize this as you see fit by going to settings and going to various notifications, and I can sort them out by time, and you can see what all comes in the notification center. Then over here you have Android 2.3.5 with Samsung's TouchWiz version 4.0. Now you can see if you worked with 3.0 with something like the Droid Charge, some of these older Samsung devices, the Infuse, you can see huge improvements over here. It looks much better, and that uh, you can see that those kind of the blockiness between the applications is gone. Now, out of the box, you don't get anything on this device. You know, no Sprint installed applications. It's part of the Apple agreement. But over here, you do get quite a few T-Mobile pre-installed applications. You get 411 and more, Asphalt 6, uh, Blio bonus apps. You get uh, let's see, Keys Air, Kai's Air with Samsung. You get Lookout. You get My Account, My Device, more for me, all of which are T-Mobile. You get Samsung's Media Hub access. And then over here, you get Pro Apps, uh, some stuff I've installed. Social Hub, Polaris Office, T-Mobile TV, Mall, Name ID, and then a quick video chat, visual voicemail, and Zinio Reader. So quite a bit on the T-Mobile front, just outside of you know the typical uh, installed stuff, just a lot on the T-Mobile front. And unfortunately, you can't uninstall it. So if you go in here to Applications, you can sideload applications, but you can't uninstall you know, visual voicemail, for example. You can uninstall the updates. But if you want to go in here and say, let's get rid of Asphalt 6, and see it doesn't allow me to uninstall it. So there's some T-Mobile bloatware. It's unable to be uninstalled. And then uh, here, just to give you an idea, is what the notifications bar looks like. If you're wondering, you know, this pull-down th pull thing looks kind of familiar. I mean, they've definitely made it Apple-esque and kind of tweaked it and made it go hand-in-hand -hand with iOS 5. But if you're wondering, it does look pretty similar, in my opinion, to Android. Now, up here, you get some uh, easy, quick access buttons, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, silent, and auto rotation. So you get easy access, you get your network ID and your notifications as well. But you'll see again, you know, TouchWiz 4, just you can tell it's incredibly uh, incredibly lag free. You can see pretty easy to run through, although it's pretty interesting when you work with the three Galaxy S2 devices like I have and you've had them side by side and you've worked with them all extensively, I will say the Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile and day-to-day -day use is the slowest out of the three. Just not having an Exynos processor for whatever reason uh, really affects this device and you see the occasional stutter 
and the occasional lag on the T-Mobile version, but still very smooth in comparison to you know most other Android devices on the market. You can see pretty quick and easy to move through, and then you have seven home screens over here as well, which can easily be seen at once by pinching it out and uh, going back just like that. So a lot of different options here. Some excellent widgets. You don't get widgets on the home screens on iOS, but you do on Android. Now the downside to that is it consumes quite a bit of battery life. There's a big 1,850 milliamp hour battery in here, but you can still uh, take, it can take its toll pretty quickly with these auto updating news widgets that you see here, auto updating time, auto updating weather, and more. What I do like about the TouchWiz widgets though is you can customize the size. So I can make the weather widget like that for example. I may be able to even make it all the way down here. Nope, guess not. I can make it like that or I can make it just like that. So quite a, you know, some nice options to customize. So if you're in an area like this where you only have a little bit of widget space left, I could fit in another weather widget here, or I could fit it in down here, or you know, over here on the side. You get the idea, as opposed to HTC Sense, which while the widgets are beautiful, they're unable to be customized in terms of size. So a big, uh, a big pro there. So if widgets are your thing, Android's gonna be your platform, but again, the downside is, it does take its toll pretty quickly on battery life. Android has by far, uh, in my opinion, out of the world, not in my opinion, in testing, out of the, uh, the various platforms, battery life is pretty poor for the most part on Android. This one, you're gonna see a battery life, if you're coming from the iPhone 4, you will see a noticeable difference here. Apple quotes up to eight hours uh, of use, you know, pretty heavy, moderate use. With moderate use here, I can make it through a day, but I get pretty close when it gets to 10 or 11 o'clock at night of running out of juice. Now with the 4, I can make it a day and a half easily. So again, still very good on the 4S. I haven't had the battery woes that everybody's complaining about uh, on various forums and online, but I will say it is uh, worse than the iPhone 4S, particularly due to things like Siri and the fact that this uh, the Sprint version and the Verizon version, the two that are on my desk, are both CDMA devices, another thing to keep in mind as well.